one of the biggest stumbling blocks that you are going to face in your life, not just in 2020, but in your life, is really forgiving somebody. I'm not talking about ignoring somebody or anything like that. I'm talking about really, really forgiving somebody. So this video should help you to be able to walk into a room or hear the person's name and you still good. Let's go. So a situation went down and you know it happened. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. Like let's say you have a mom that always gets on your nerve. They say little disrespectful things to you. You feel cut down all the time. Those are like small little microaggressions. But then sometimes you have things that are like a big event and the big event uh, sometimes can hit you harder than the small microaggressions. First, I need you to accept that it actually happened. You were actually hurt. If you can't face the fact or accept that you were actually hurt, then you may not be at a place where you're ready to move to the next step, which is actually facing the hurt. So after you've accepted that you've actually been hurt, I need you to actually face the hurt. Once you face that you've actually been hurt, you are now on your way to some type of closure because once you face the hurt, you have said, I want this thing to come to a close. Here's how you face it. One, you're gonna need to face this hurt in your mind. It's gonna replay over and over. The thing is gonna try to take you out. It can try to take over your whole life if you let it. And you wanna make sure that it's not impacting your next relationship, your next job, your next child that you have, anything. You want this thing to be dealt with in your mind. One of the ways you deal with it in your mind is you dive head first into scripture that focuses on loving other people. Yes, the Bible is powerful. If you actually consume things that say, I will be empathetic, I will love, I will be compassionate. I know it sounds all fluffy, but what you're doing is downloading all this goodness and it will push out all of that badness. Okay, here's the second part of facing. You need to talk to the person. If it's a person that you can actually access, talking to them can help you bring closure. But here's a caveat. If they are too immature to handle a conversation, you may need to wait or you may not be able to have the conversation. Or you may need to go into this conversation knowing they might be too immature to hear me say what they did hurt me because. Okay? Or I'm hurt because you da da da. Now, you don't want to sound like accusatory, so it depends on the relationship you have with them, but you want to make sure that you go in with no expectations. And that's hard. I know it's easier to say on this camera, but no expectations, meaning I'm coming to get closure for myself. I'm not coming to get an apology from them. I'm not coming with expectations for what they need to give me. I am just coming to make sure I get closure. So let's say, you know, somebody, you know, go back to the cat. Somebody, you know, stole your cat. You know they stole your cat because they had a rat in their garage. And so they stole your cat so that rat, you know, could be dead by the hands of the cat. And it happened. And then they put the cat back in your yard and, you know, around after a couple of days. So what did you do? You are so upset and not trusting of this neighbor. So what you gonna do? You are going to go to the neighbor and say, hey, I noticed my cat was missing a couple days. You know, I didn't know if you guys knew where he was or anything. I kind of had, you know, thought that maybe he could have helped with the rat problem. I wasn't sure, you know, did he help you guys out while, while he was gone? So it's almost a way to bring it up without accusing, without saying you stole my cat, but y'all know examples my examples be weird but you get my point how can you bring the thing up without confronting but being straightforward my cat was missing this happened I thought they could have been here but did they help were they around and then that gives a person a chance to say actually they weren't around I did see them at Johnny's house on the front porch because they were given a milk I think they didn't know who they belonged to I didn't even cross my mind that it was your cat do you see because sometimes the forgiveness thing ain't even an issue. We just got offended over something we misunderstood. So you gotta give that thing room. So in facing them and facing them one-on-one, -on -one, 
you got to make sure that you're going in with no expectations. Don't accuse them. You're not going for an apology. You're going for your own closure and you need it to be with a mature individual. Sometimes you can't tell if they're mature until it's too late. Do it anyway. The last thing you need to do is guard your heart. Now this thing or this situation is going to come back up. What I hope is that it does not come back up by somebody you know, like a friend. Are uh, you still talking to them? What happened with that person? That thing you told me about the other day, it's going to come back up. And if you rehash it, you could have to start this whole cycle all over again of acknowledging your hurt. You almost re-injure yourself by doing this. Acknowledging your hurt, facing the hurt, and then needing to guard your heart all over again. Now, in guarding your heart, what you're doing is saying, there are certain guards I'm putting around the situation around this topic. You're saying, I won't talk about it beyond this point. I won't talk about it at all. I will treat them well. The Bible says, bless those that curse you. So it says, actually give them something to bless them. Okay? So that is what you're doing. So you're trying to figure out how do I make sure I don't let this thing re resurrect itself in my life again? Because truth be told, truth be told, you gonna have to do this a couple times depending on how intense that hurt is. If that hurt is true, true, mega mega hit you right here you might have to roll this cycle around a few times so if you know how to do this it will keep you free because you don't want to take the baggage you don't want to take your ex-boyfriend your ex-husband with you you don't want to take the company that fired with you you don't want to take shadiness with you you don't want to take all that with you so you need to become a pro at accepting or realizing that you're hurt become a pro at facing that thing whether through conversation getting your mind all washed up and clean over the thing and third putting guards up to where even if someone brought a name up you have gotten yourself so cleaned up inside you don't flinch you can show up as your regular self man there ain't nothing worse than somebody you know is offended with you and when you get around them they're like super dramatic because they've been talking about you uh, they need to get themselves cleaned up they're still walking around with baggage and tripping that's for them to clean up no you're doing this process for your own closure if you can get closure you're set pray for them to get theirs because if they need to talk to you that's not your responsibility it's theirs Get yourself together and keep that thing push it. Like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff that we say, but mainly I want you to visit itspriscillab.com and I want you to actually subscribe to the email list. I am building a community of all of my followers who are locked into the mission of don't be useless. That means we are delivering on our purpose, building our confidence, and we are using our God-given gifts. Don't be useless, use those gifts. Build that confidence and deliver on that purpose, all right? I want to see you at ispacillaby.com. I also want to see you on IG. I hang out there most, and uh, I do have a Facebook community as well. I'll see you guys on the next video.